Hey, this is Jason with Team Backcountry, and today I'm going to review the Sunto Traverse Alpha watch. I've been using this watch for about two years now, and I've taken it on a lot of hunting trips and just kind of everyday general uh, wearing it. Um, and this is an awesome watch. It's um, I've owned a couple Suntos and. For hunting, this is definitely my favorite watch that I've owned. I've owned the Ambit and I've also got a Spartan. Um, and this is definitely my favorite. A couple reasons. Um, first reason is it's extremely durable. It, I mean, the glass on this doesn't hardly have a scratch after wearing it for two years. The bezel, which is this part, um, same thing. It's just extremely durable. Um, and the straps. These are the nylon straps, I believe, which is kind of the standard on the Traverse Alpha. And these straps are super tough. I've never had one tear um, or anything like that. The only downside to these straps, these nylon ones, is they have a tendency to get a little stinky. Um, after wearing them for a week or so, they just build up sweat and stink and if you're gutting an animal, you know, just kind of everything. It, for whatever reason, it holds a smell and it starts to get a little smelly. So that's kind of a downside and I know a couple people have had that problem before so I'm not the only one. To avoid it, when you buy these watches, you can actually upgrade to a silicone strap which is going to be maybe not quite as durable, but it's not going to hold the smell, and it's going to. Um, there's this. There's different colors and all that that you can get. There's brighter colors, orange and blue and white, if if that's something that you want to get. So, just something to be aware of. Just be aware that this nylon strap might get a little stinky. Um, if that doesn't bug you, then this is an awesome strap and it's super durable. As far as battery life, the battery life on this is pretty good. It's not the best that I've ever seen, but it'll typically last me um, a seven to 10 day hunt if I use it right. One thing that I like to do to conserve battery is when I'm hiking in, I don't like to record my GPS trail because that's when it burns the battery the most. If it's recording every um, your trail that you take, it's gonna burn the battery a lot quicker. If you do that, it's only gonna last you a day, maybe. So don't just leave it recording the entire time, and I'll talk about that here in a sec, how you start recording your trails and all that, but use that as necessary, and I wouldn't use it any more than that. So if you're only using it for saving like a GPS location or for an alarm clock or just the basic functions, I mean, it'll last you an entire month. So when it burns the battery the most is when you're tracking your GPS trail. If your battery does die on the trail, one thing that you can get is one of these little Goal Zero um, portable chargers. It's actually kind of endorsed by Sunto, so they've kind of teamed up to make this little charger. Um, you can get these different styles, different brands, super cheap at Walmart. But this has enough juice to charge this watch multiple times, which you should only need to charge it once if you're hunting for 10 days or so. So it's really nice to have. All you gotta have is your charging cord here, which your watch charges like this. Um, so when you're gonna plug it in, all you do is plug that in like there, like you would normally would. And then your watch, the way it charges is it's got these little prongs right here on this go into those little grooves. So you plug it in and just like that, it'll start charging. Now this is dead, so it's not doing anything, but it'll show that it's charging right there. So this is pretty handy to have. It's really lightweight, doesn't weigh too much and it'll allow you to use your watch pretty much as much as you want when you're out hunting because you can recharge it every night. So kind of a cool thing to have. So here on the main screen, uh, we'll go over just the basic functions. The main buttons that you're gonna wanna know about is this bottom left one. Here is the flashlight or the backlight and that'll light it up. The cool feature that it has is a flashlight. So if you hold this button down, 
it will turn on a flashlight, which is nice to have if you're looking for something in the dark, like your real flashlight or trying to find something while you're in your tent. It's nice to just have this on your, on your wrist and you can just hold that down, turn it on. It's actually pretty bright at night. It gives off quite a bit of light for how little light it actually gives off. So it's a pretty handy little tool to have. Just push that to turn it off. Um, if you hold this button up here, this is gonna lock the screen. So by locking it, it won't let you push any of these buttons. It's kind of nice to have if you're out hiking. Um, it's pretty common to bump these and it'll change your screen. So if that kind of bugs you or you don't want it to do that, you can lock the screen and it'll stop doing that. Hold it to unlock it. Uh, this one down here in the bottom left, that is going to save your current location which I'm not gonna do right now, but say you're out hiking and I use it a lot for when I set up a trail camera. I put up a camera, I always mark my GPS locations when I set a camera up just so I can find it in the dark or another day or if I don't come back for a couple weeks or months. Sometimes I forget exactly which tree I put it on. So I'll hold this down. It'll save the exact location where you're at. It's going to look for the GPS. Sometimes it takes a little bit depending on where you're at. And then you can select a different thing. So there's a bunch of different options here. Um, fish, and birds, and big game. And if I want to save it as a trail cam, it's actually got an exact name for trail cam. So I can select trail cam. If I push this button here, it'll save it. And done. It's in the watch. And I'll show you how to pull that up here in a second. So from here on your main screen, you've got a couple main screens here. This is the first one. It's just gonna show your time, date, and right now it's set to altimeter. You can change the bottom part by pushing this left button. So right now it's on altimeter. If I push that, it'll show how many steps I've taken today. So 55, it will show your battery percentage. So it's at 92%. This is kind of cool. It's got the sunset and sunrise times. It'll just kind of automatically change as it sits here. So sunrise and sunset. So it's kind of nice to have those. If you're hunting a new state or area, it'll kind of help you remember what time you need to get out of bed and all that. So, and just a regular second counter. And that's about it. So pretty basic, nothing too crazy. If I push this center button here, that's gonna take me to my next screen. And I have it set as an altimeter. You can change these, so um, I'll show you how to change it so you can turn on your moon phase, or if you want a, stop, a stopwatch on it, you can change those. Right now I have it set as altimeter. Right here shows your altitude, and this is kind of a graph of, I think it's the past 12 hours or so of what you've hiked. So if you're out hiking, you're going up and down a lot, it's gonna show you your graph of your altitude, gain, and loss. So that's the altimeter page, and I have the last one set as a compass. So I use this all the time, just which direction's north, and um, it's pretty handy to have that. So those are the first three main screens. So if you wanna change these screens to, say, a moon phase or stopwatch, the way you can do that is push this top button here and where it says scroll down to where it says displays. So once you click on displays, you can select a bunch of different options that'll show up on your main uh, screen without going into the settings. So say I want to pull up the moon phase one. I want the moon phase to show on my main screens. So I'll click on moon phase. Okay. And so now here I am back to my home screen. If I click through these, there's my altimeter again, there's my compass, and there's my moon phase. And so that's kind of cool to, if you want to adjust your settings, that's kind of a cool thing to have. So you can change uh, the date, what the moon phase is going to be on a certain day, the sunrise and sunset, and what time the moon's going to come up. Um, you can change it to dates in the future and all that. So kind of cool. You can also click this bottom left button and it'll show you what the moon's gonna look like. So anyways, 
to turn that back off, go back to displays at the top and right here, click end moon phase and that'll turn it off and go back, click this top button here and that's now back to just the three compass altimeter and then the main time. So that's how you change the displays. All right, so the way that you record a hiking trail, say you're out hiking and you want to record your exact path that you take and you want to know how far you hiked and how fast you're hiking and all that. The way you do that is you can click this top right button and click on record. And what that's going to do, it's going to search for the GPS, find it. As soon as it finds it, it's going to start recording. So at this point, say I start this at my tr at the trailhead that I'm at and start hiking. This is going to start recording my distance, current time, my current elevation, and you can click through different settings. So this will show your altimeter as you start hiking, um, how much you've climbed and how much you've descended. This is going to be your current hiking speed, your average hiking speed, and your average um, time per mile. This will show a little map of your hiking trail. So as you hike, it'll kind of draw a map, which is kind of cool. And it's nice if you want to turn back around and follow the exact same trail, you can follow it pretty much exactly the same trail you take. And then just your compass. And that's that on that. So I'm recording here and if you want to stop it what you're going to do is hold this top button that's going to stop it and then it's going to save it so to get back to where that was at click up here go to uh, logbook and right here is a history of that trail that i just hiked so you can go back and you can look at it again and see where it was at and you can follow it again. So it's kind of a cool feature to have. If you don't want to click up here and then click record, the fastest way to do that is just hold this top right button. If you just hold that, it's immediately going to look for the GPS and start recording. So just kind of one less step. If you want to just hurry and do it while you're at the trailhead and get hiking really quick, that's how you can do that. So. I'm going to stop that again, I'm going to save it, and we'll back out to the main screen. So say a couple months ago I went and set up a trail camera, and now I want to navigate back to the trail camera. This is how you do it. So you're going to click this top button here, and we're going to scroll up to navigation and select that. And all the locations that we save are under POIs, points of interest. So we're going to select that load here for a sec and so let's say a couple months ago I saved this place um, called trail cam number 12 I don't even know where that's at but we'll click on it and the way we want to navigate back to that is best way that I like is scroll down to view Click next, that's your GPS coordinates. Uh, this is the altitude of the camera where it's at. And then this is going to navigate me to the camera. So this is saying that that trail camera is 84.19 miles in that direction. So as you turn, this is gonna turn. So if you're trying to navigate directly back to this camera, you're just gonna follow this arrow and that will lead you right to where it was set. So I use this feature all the time because I'll set up quite a few cameras every year and I can't remember exactly which tree I put them on. So this will lead me back to the exact location of where that camera was at. Or if you saved a trail and you want to find that trail again, same thing, you just go back to it and you can follow the GPS right back to where it is. So these are tons of different uh, locations that I've saved over the past however long and you can track your way back to those pretty easily. So that's 
my review of the Suto Traverse Alpha. It kind of takes a little bit of time to get used to. Uh, it's quite a quite a bit of things going on, but it's not that confusing. And after using it for a day or so, just take it out hiking for the day. Use all the buttons that you can. It's it's pretty easy to figure out how everything works. It's not that complicated. So. This watch is awesome. I Like I said, I've been using it for two years or so. I've never had a problem with it. It's extremely accurate. Um, this is a great watch. So if you're looking for a good hunting watch, I would highly recommend this. Yeah, check it out. I'll put a link below to where to find this on Sunto's website so you can find some more info. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks.